Okay, it's time for a product unboxing. Now, this came from gearbest.com and it is the kit to make a laser engraver. So before we go any further, I should say that this kit came free of charge from gearbest.com. The review sample was free of charge, but my opinions in this video are my own. Now, there will be links in the video description to buy this on gearbest.com. Those are affiliate links, and if you click and buy that way, I do make a small commission. If you object to that, then please feel free to Google this up and don't use my links. So let's just take stock of what we get in the box. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I already have a laser engraver, and this is by Electraw, so it's the same company who made it as the existing laser engraver that I have. But this is a different model, and it works in a slightly different way. So anyway, let's unbox everything out of here and see what we've actually got in the pack. So, there's a power brick there, with a figure eight type adapter. There's the rest of the electrics here, so there's the control board, which is the same model of control board by the look of it, as the one on the Electra. Actually, don't know. It looks like it might be just as it's a two-axis thing. So, yeah, it looks like it might be slightly different. Arduino-based or Arduino clone-based board. A few little samples of materials there for engraving little bits, pieces of plywood and some card. There is a selection of cables there. These will be the cables for the stepper motors and for the laser itself. A little bit of cable management springy stuff. And this, I guess, is going to be the laser module itself. So this is a 2.5 watt diode laser. So let's take those out of the way. So there's a parts list. Then we've got a nice little organiser full of all the screws and wheels and various other bits and pieces of fittings, little brackets and corners. There's a pair of laser goggles, now that's quite important, eye protection. That's a bracket that goes on the XY axis that the laser fits into. Three nice little stepper motors, so nice chunky little stepper motors, three of them exactly the same. Various little bits of plastic here, I presume those are just guards for something or other, we'll find out later. <coughs> a bunch of laser cut parts, this is laser cut acrylic with its protective paper still on there. So that's like perspex, and that'll be the parts of the structure. More cables, so we've got a, oh no these are belts, so there's belts there, drive belts, a rather nice USB micro cable, nice braided micro USB cable there, very pretty. And this is the mains cable for the power brick, not the right kind for my locality, so that's a two pin Euro plug there. Not a very good looking one actually, I've got to say, look, let's have a look at that. Mm. I don't think those pins are meant to converge like that there, so I think that's probably a Bit of a poor quality cable there, but never mind. I'm not going to be using that one because I'll find my own figure of eight cable to pu plug into the power brick. And then finally, we've got these beams here, which are a bit like sort of uh, make a slide type of extruded aluminium sections. So, one great thick one, two broad ones that are shorter, and two long ones that are square in section. So that is the contents of the box. Now you will have noticed by now probably that there are no instructions in here. And that's fine, I expected this and I expected this to be a kit so I'm not going to be upset about that this time. That was a little bit when I when I was surprised by the Alex draw the first time round and a little bit taken aback to find that it was A it was a kit which I didn't expect and B there were no instructions but I expected that this time. So what I'm going to do is now head off to the Alex draw forum 
there's a wiki there that tells you how to assemble this so I'll get that either printed out or on the screen next to me and we'll get to work assembling it. So I think the only other thing to point out at this point is that the packaging seems pretty competent so that was well packed it's all nestled inside little layered cut foam sections so nothing could rattle around or shake loose in transit and there was a nice thick chunk of foam on the top there to protect all of those pieces from damage during transit. There's a piece on the bottom of, as well of course and it's just as well because the box took a big knock in transit. There's the corner of another box has gone in there and penetrated the cardboard but let's have a look and see yeah no, no damage really I don't even know where that came through, but there you go. So, nicely packed and a good thing too because this has had to come all the way from China. Anyway, let's get building. Okay, so that's the Electraw A3 Pro fully assembled now. Assembly was pretty straightforward. There are a few spare pieces, which is good. Although, unfortunately, there was one part which didn't work. This little standoff here, uh, it's not threaded, I don't think. So, that's only the little thing that holds the two plates protecting the PCB apart. So, I just made a makeshift solution with two bolts. It's fine. Everything else went together really well. It was a little bit fiddly in places, and I reckon you probably need to allow about two hours for the assembly, maybe two to three hours. But all very straightforward. So it's all wired up and ready to go. So we're gonna fire it up and see what it's like to use. So I think I need to protect the table here. So I'm just gonna use this piece of MDF, which is actually the piece from the base of my enclosure that I made for my other Electraw device. So, well that's interesting. A little bit of a wobble there. I may just have to loosen off all of these screws and let it settle flat and then put it back together again. Let's just do that anyway. It's probably the most difficult part, or the most tedious part of this whole build was actually peeling the film off of the acrylic pieces. I think they've been water jet cut and I think the water jet has somehow made the glue at the very edges of the paper backing even more sticky than it was before and so I actually had to use a sharp knife to separate the paper from the acrylic. 
So that was the most difficult and tedious part of the build, which is, as I, I guess that's a good thing to be able to say that. If the worst part is something as trivial as that, then it's not a big deal. Anyway, let's head off to the Electro Forum, the Electmaker Forum, and we're going to have a look at the Elex, Elex Laser A3 Pro instructions. Right, we need to connect the power supply first. So the supplied Euro plug isn't going to work for me, but I do have a spare figure of eight lead anyway. And this, this power supply has an input range of 100 to 240 volts, so that's just fine. So we'll plug that in. It just goes into there. Okay. Then we plug in the USB cable. press stud strap around this braided USB cable. It's a very nice USB cable. Just micro USB. Alright, micro USB is plugged in. What's next? Open the Lex Cam. Now I've already got a Lex Cam installed on my laptop because my Alex Draw uses the same software. So I'm, it'll be interesting to see whether I'm able to use two different devices, not obviously at the same time, but whether I'm able to use this device without wiping out the configuration for my Alex Draw. A laser switched on automatically when I powered up the when I've plugged in the USB, so I've just pressed the button on there which turns it on to sort of weak mode because I don't really want to burn a hole right through. This material. Let's get that focus down. That looks pretty good. Okay, it's found the thing on COM3. Uh, and I need to go into settings. Select machine, and it's the Lex laser. Okay, let's try. I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do, I think, I'll just engrave a bit of text onto here. Is that going to turn? That's okay. So if I do week on, yeah, week off, that's good. Laser on, oops, laser off, yeah, that's working fine. Okay, I think it's time to put the goggles on before I blind myself with this 2.5 watt laser. So, let's get some, let's just do some text, I think. And we will just do a quick test. Yeah, that'll do. Goggles that are supplied are dark green, so hopefully that will protect my eyes from the blue laser. Let's just go for, let's just see what happens. Here we go. So, okay, so that's all I'm going to do. That's actually cut, well, it's engraved the top of the MDF here rather nicely with just a bit of text. That's all I'm going to do before we go and put this, because I've already filled this room with smoke, that's all I'm going to do before I put this in the ventilated enclosure. So let's take this upstairs, get it in the enclosure, hopefully it will fit in the enclosure I've already made for my other Electral laser, and then we'll have some fun with it in another video. Okay, so unfortunately it doesn't quite fit into my homemade laser enclosure. Just these little stepper motors here, just stick out a little bit too far and that prevents this from fitting inside the enclosure but that no matter I'm actually gonna I, all I need to do is replace two pieces of wood front and back on there and
and make some little flanges at the side there so it still seals and I think that'll be fine. What a shame! But of course I didn't know that when I built this enclosure. I didn't even know I was going to get this. So anyway, opinions on the Alex Laser A3 Pro laser engraver. Well this was a fun kit to make actually and the instructions on the Alex Maker forum were pretty good. Covered most things and there was a few little steps I had to figure out for myself but actually it wasn't that hard. So assembly was fun. Took about two hours to assemble in total I would say but you probably want to allow three. Um, it's a good little machine. The laser seems nice and powerful. The action is very nice and smooth. I do have a little bit of concern that the mass of this gantry means that the acceleration of the motors and so on may make it inaccurate, maybe at corners or something like that, but we will find that out in further tests. So that's all for now. This is just really about the assembly and unboxing of this device, and actually it seems very well engineered. Everything fit together very nicely. There was no problems with tolerances on drill holes or screw positions or anything like that. It's been quite an interesting little build and it seems like quite a nice device. So I'll do a follow-up video when I've got the, the enclosure expanded to accommodate this properly and we'll see what we can actually do with it. The advantage that the Alex Laser has over the Alex Draw, which is underneath inside the enclosure, this is the A3 and as the name suggests the engraving area is equivalent to the size of a sheet of A3 paper. So, yeah, almost exactly, actually. So, we've got a much larger engraving area, a usable engraving area, in one go with the A3 Pro. The advantage that obviously the, the Alex Draw has over the Alex Laser is that you can flip it round and using the servo mechanism you can install a pen so it can draw pictures as well as laser engraving. So there are choices here really if you only want to do laser stuff the Alex Laser A3 Pro might be the device for you. If you want to do a bit of everything the Alex Draw could be the one. Actually they are different devices for different purposes. So thanks for watching I hope that's been useful. I'll put links in the video description if you're interested in buying this I'll also put links in the video description in case you're assembling one of these and you need the links to instructions. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.